So the game book, Universal Law. We um, start this game out in this world, right? And we don't really have a game book. We don't know the rules of how the energy plays, and we don't understand, I think, you know, we've got a little bit of an idea with the law of attraction and, you know, a couple of them, but we don't really have an idea of how the, the whole um, energy system actually works. So that's what we're going to start talking about. Great teacher once said that the first and foremost thing we must establish is where what eon we're sta standing in. Which, how interesting is that, right? But if we're playing a video game, you know, we have to understand which round we're in. You know, if you're if you're looking at life like you know, okay, we're having these numerous challenges. We're we're in this this um, field that is like a big dream. And each time we have a, a reincarnation or each time we have a new round, we get a new set of challenges. So we kind of have to understand where we are in the process so that we can remember what we already know, right? Yeah, so certain, you know, a certain amount of it is about remembering. And I think that through meditation and stuff, that's where you start gathering that insight and information that, we have already gathered through these other rounds. I think that um, when we come into this this lifetime and we feel like this is it, and you know we're starting from scratch, it's really intimidating, right? Like we get really bogged down in that, you know, day to day trivia, right? And we're not looking at the bigger picture of like, you know, if we were playing a video game and we didn't have any challenges, it would be really boring, wouldn't it? Nobody would continue to play. So playing the game mindfully means standing in the present, in the moment. Old emotion is diffused. Now when, you know, the Buddhists and the Hindus talk about diffusing or detaching from emotion, what we need to understand is what they're talking about is diffusing your old emotions so that when you walk into any given situation, your emotions are around the exact you know, where you're standing, not you're carrying everything but the kitchen sink into the situation with you, right? So here we're beginning to start to understand that our thoughts and our actions are creating our world. You know, they're creating our dream. The world is interacting, you know, and it's... <laughs> ah! When you think that every word you say and every thought we have and every action we have is creating a sequence of reactions in the world, and we're manifesting what we're living. So when we start understanding that, we get to a point where it's like, hey, you know, wake up. Because our choices are what really move us forward in this game. And if we're not making them, if we're being passive, if we're allowing other people to make our choices, if we're, you know, afraid of making choices, we're not moving. Right? We're not moving. So life's like a video game, right? And there's... Each, each time we're here on this planet, we're here with a certain set of challenges, right? And if we would, rather than taking that really personally, you know, we, if we're sw swimming around in our own pond of yuck, and we swim around and we swim around and we swim around in it, right? We can say, okay, I'm at peace with what I know. But we're not growing, right? We can choose to really play it. You know, really play it and play it with strategy. And to do that, we have to quit taking things so personally. We have to start playing it with some strategy, playing to win. And we have to kind of know how to do that, right? You know, because I think when we take our challenges personally, we miss the point that it's all there to play with us and to tweak us into becoming what is intended. When we're just you know, getting bogged down in our, in our challenges and we begin to struggle. We're not learning, right? We just swim. So, we, you know, our big thing is why we're here. Why are you here? And, you know, a lot of times as, I, as I'm working with people in my practice, it seems that, you know, we're working really hard to be something, and, and the more we get in alignment and in, in, in our integrity, the less what we're doing has to do with what we're trying to do, 
right? Like your destiny, you know, is less about what you're trying to do than it is, you know, the culmination of our experiences. You know, what we're really here to bring to the world, we have gathered through all the learning that we've done through our challenges, right? So, rule one, the law of divine oneness. Everything is connected to everything. Everything we say and do and believe has a corresponding effect on others and the universe around us. So, when you take that literally, that means we're talking about everything, not just the people, you know. And in this world of I, it really is. Like, that's a huge thought when you think that every word we <coughs> speak is affecting everything around us, every molecule, every molecule of water, every air, you know, everything. It's affecting it. Our judgments create separation from ourselves and from each other, from nature, right? Anytime we're classifying something as right or wrong or we're putting it in a structure or where, um, you know, we're creating walls. Every time we're creating a structure, we're creating a wall between us and what could be. Does that make sense? So when we... Um, I love this. You know, the Course of Miracles compares each human to a cell in the human body. So think about that. So each cell is necessary for the body to, be, to function optimally. Let's not play with that right now, okay? So when you think about that, you know, there's no jealousy, there's no anything in this human body for all these cells to work right. And the way the Course of Miracles works is, in, you know, until everybody comes into alignment to form the one body, the world's going to be in chaos, right? Because we're not, we're not playing with our unique talents. We're not playing with our, you know, we're playing everything from our mind and not playing, or from our brain and not playing the game. You know, the big game. We're playing this game of, of straightforward. It's like we play with this bird's eye view and aren't seeing the whole picture. So when I think about that, I think about, you know, the, the water experiments. Do you know about that? You know, um, Dr. M how do you say his name? I always have trouble saying it. Masaru Emoto. Is that how you say it? Masaru Emoto. And he talks about the effects our words have on water. So if you think about that, and really think about that, you know, that means every word I say would affect the, all the water molecules in your body. In your body. It affects the water molecules in the animals, the water molecules in the plants. There nothing be, would be on this planet without water. So... Could we, cons you know, possibly be um, a little less global warming and a little more word pollution, possibly, as far as our world and the state it's in? You know, and when, and I, and I always feel like some of these pieces were interpreted very differently, but that do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that's because it's coming right back at you coming right back at you because you are me. So if I'm affecting you in an adverse way, that's going to come right back to me, right? Because we're all one. So it's interesting. I always find that his um, interpretation of universal law was so direct, so direct. So the law of vibration, everything in the universe moves, vibrates, and travels in circular patterns. Mm -hmm. I always kind of see it in figure eights, but I guess it's kind of the same thing. They kind of like go like this, right? So in my mind, it's going like this, but it's kind of going like that. Um, Do you ever hear Michael Tellinger? No, tell me. He's, he's uh, been working all around the world, but he's like for... No banks, you know, and everybody, they, everything about how to me is like the, what the world should be. But he's talking about all sound being what they used to move. You know, I mean, it's sound is by far the more important thing than 
that, you know, and, and maybe they mag, anti magnetic, but more than like the oh, you can make so many more things do happen with sound vibrations than that's why our words. Saw. It's just I, it's not even pictures. It's he's just talking, and I can't stop listening to him. No, but it's because of our words, right? Our yeah, words are they, create vibration. That's why if you have a song and it's got words to it, they're going right to your soul. That's why you we're so affected by that, right? That's why we're so affected by everything that. Everything has a certain vibration tone like that you know, yeah when I asked you about it's got that. a frequency yeah yeah we're everything that. right that's right that's what it is yeah so it says the same principles that apply to the physical world apply to our thoughts and our feelings and desires and wills and the in the ethereal world each sound each sound thing and even thought has its own vibrational frequency unique unto itself so that's really powerful when you think about it, right? When you think, all right, you know, everything's moving. And if, if our words are traveling like that through a vibration, that means that's why, you know, sometimes I had pretty severe childhood trauma, physical and every which way. And I always said that the physical piece was the easiest to get over. But the words, like go right to your soul, right? And you have to go back in and find them and get them out of there. But, you know. So thoughts, words, where they ripple out and permanently alter everything they come in contact with. So our word goes out and it's hitting molecules and hitting molecules and is interacting with, you know, we think that they go away, but that's why, that's why, you know, they don't. Like, words don't go away, right? They affect, the effect they have just doesn't go away. I know, I know. But let's not play with that right now. Obviously, your frequency, you know, I didn't quit playing with that toy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so have, have you guys understand how, have you heard of morphic fields, how that works? <clears throat> okay. So when we, um, when we send words out into the universe, that's why I always often talk about worry. Don't spread it. Don't say it out loud because the things we say become solid, right? And they enter the, enter the, the universe and, you know, there are fields in the, in the atmosphere that carry all the energy that everyone has ever thought about that, right? That's why when you're like, get in a loop or you get, you know, frustrated with something and you start saying it out loud and pretty soon it's growing and growing and growing and growing. And then you start realizing that some of the thoughts you're having may not even be yours. Like, where, how did you get to, from here to there, right? How did your actions, sometimes we have actions that are inappropriate to that. It's because we're pulling down that field, right? The same thing kind of happens, you know. I mean, it happens on the positive side, too. But, the, you know, when we get in a loop, that's it, right? We're tapping into these fields and we're pulling them down and making them ours. And we're also adding to them each time. We declare those things out loud, right? Well, you know, one of the things that kind of surprised me when I read it was, like, if they can get vibrations on flat rocks and things, they can play it and hear the sounds that people made many, many, many years ago. And I guess some is supposed to actually carry into outer space, so our words never die. Yeah, they never die. You know, when I um, first started studying with Chopra, they gave us a primordial sound, the sound that was created on the day you were born or whatever. Did you get one too? So, yeah, they don't ever go away. <laughs> She's like, all right, you guys are being a little too serious, right? So... But on the other side of that, I like to think of like, you know, when you're like in a church or you're in some sort of experience where everybody's singing one thing, you know what I mean? Or, you know, especially like, you know, words that have been said for generations, right? And how you feel that field come down and lift you up. It's the same thing. That same thing exactly happens on the other side when we're coming from that negative place with our worry or
<laughs> My dog sometimes. Yeah, so we can, you know, so on one side of the coin, we can feel, you know, that beauty grow, or we can feel our anger escalate into something bigger, you know? I mean, you can start out with, and the more you talk, the more you talk, the bigger it gets, and pretty soon you're regretting things you've said, and, you know, that's, that's part of the reason is that we're pulling those morphic fields down. The law of action is required for manifestation on this plane. We must engage in actions that support our wants and desires, right? And I think we often get bogged down in exactly what those should be, right? But now, here's something that I've, I think that is, I'm seeing really a lot with spirituality and different things right now, right? Is that we have all these thoughts, we have these ideas, we go get energy work done, we do this, we do that, and I do energy work. But are you, you know, the level of um, clarity is, is life changing? Is your life truly changing? You can go have an experience of having yourself reborn, you know, those, those birth canal experiences, but are you different? Like, is life going to be different the next day, right? Or are you just playing? And just playing is fun. I've done it tons, but is it going to change your life? And I think that's where we are where with religion as it stood, too. It's like, okay, those are a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas, but how do we make them to where they can actually start working in our life, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of times with spirituality, we... Um, we give a lot of allowances around that because that's always been something that's happened in our head, not in our uh, actually playing out in our lives. So action with intent creates movement. So the piece is, is it doesn't matter where you're walking. It doesn't matter what your action is because like your GPS, you have to know where you are, you have to know where you're going, and you have to get out of the parking lot. It's not going to talk as long as you're sitting still, right? So I think often uh, we get caught up in, am I making the right choice? Am I making the wrong choice? And in reality, you just need to move. Make some choice. Make some sort of movement towards your goal. It doesn't have to be, you know, there's been times where I'm like, okay, I just feel like I need action. And maybe I'm going to sit down and write something. Maybe I'm going to, you know what I mean? But something that is heading in that direction of what you're trying to accomplish you know? So they're not a wrong word choices, right? Because just like with the GPS, you get off course, right? She just tells you to come back. That's how the universe works too. And there are many different routes to get to one place. So it's not like you have to think, oh my gosh, I'm walking this straight line and blah, blah, blah. It's, life is about the experiences that are around it, around the lines, right? Yeah, so stop judging yourself. Get out of the parking lot and start moving. And I love this one, right? I would rather you be hot or cold. For lukewarm, I will spew you from my lips. Again, the master of universal law. You know? There he's saying, like, no right, no wrong. Just do something. Just do something. Because life is about action. Life is about doing. Life's about experiences. So just have them. Change in you changes everything. <laughs>